Okay, ready? Okay. Hey guys, it's Brad again from Bradley Performance Products. In today's video, we're going to be going over a lot of customer questions that we get and answering those questions. So stay tuned. Okay, so in today's video, we are going over questions that we get a lot. I get a lot of phone calls, customers that just want to talk, and I enjoy it, talking about riding T-dubs. But they want my opinion uh, on what they should use, what they should buy, and why so i've written down a bunch of them and i'm going to go around the bike real quick and just give you some opinions and why we use what we use starting with the front tire we use really nasty front tires because quite frankly the factory tire is trash and i want to have confidence in the front of the bike when i'm riding i want to have confidence that it's going to stick and it's going to go where i want it to go so we use generally a 140, 80, 18 motocross tire of some sort. A lot of times we use the Kenda Gauntlet. I generally use a bib in the front so that I don't have any flats, which is the foam insert. Uh, so it will be airless. But sometimes I don't have a bib or budget won't allow for one in a certain bike. And so we use an ultra heavy duty tube, which is going to be a four or a five millimeter thick tube. And we generally have pretty good flat prevention out of those. Moving on back, front suspension. We have fork extensions for people that want the bike to be taller. For those of you that are bigger guys, I see that a whole lot. Guys that are over six feet and big frame, they want the bike to feel bigger. And that's one of the things that we do to raise the bike is add fork extensions and just raise the bike up. If you are an aggressive rider, if you're not just a toodler where you're using it around the yard, around the farm, but you have some experience and you ride the bike pretty hard and pretty fast, I would recommend going to at least at bare minimum, a heavier fork oil, like a 15 weight fork oil to add some compression and rebound dampening. But I have moved over to the Racetech emulators in my forks. I love them, they change the bike. They're night and day difference. They allow me to ride the bike just like it was a motocross bike. They really change the, change the bike, night and day difference. So emulators are in there. They're not the quickest, easiest install, but it's kind of once you got it done, it's done type of deal. So I would recommend the emulators. Moving on back to engine mods. As you see this one, we are prototyping currently uh, with some big bore kits, high compression pistons, bigger carburetors, smaller carburetors, pumper carb, lighter flywheels, all kinds of engine mod. Do you need engine mods? Just depends on like all this stuff, how you're using the bike. If you're just tootling around, then you absolutely do not need any engine mods. Do you want more power? Well, more power is more fun. If you are a commuter and you ride it on the road, you will appreciate more power. If you ride aggressively in the woods like we do, then you will appreciate more power. And so we will have several engine mods coming, hopefully shortly. That's one of our focuses right now is on engine mods and higher performance. Carb jetting. A lot of you guys have an exhaust and you buy a jet kit. I would say in general, we have tried all of the common jet kits. They're generally too rich. If you're not modifying your airbox, especially if you're using the quiet core insert in your aftermarket exhaust, the jet kits are making the bikes too rich, in my opinion. I would recommend if you just have mostly stock bike and you have a pipe on it, don't change the pilot jet don't put any shims under the needle do the air screw mod maybe do the slide mod where you drill a hole in the slide but just change the main jet only at the most 
and that's where you get, in our opinion, the best performance out of a jet kit with a pipe. Our cam sprockets. We get a lot of questions about our cam sprockets. What do they do? Do I need it? No, you don't need it. But a lot of these things are not creating power out of thin air. They're moving power. They're, they're making the bike feel different and they're moving power around. With a lot of modifications, you're robbing power from the bottom and you're putting it up top or vice versa. So that's what the cam sprocket does. It moves power around. And it's not drastic, it's slight, but it is a tuning tool. The rear tire, our rear tire fat kits, we do a 25 and a 26, and we have aluminum wheels and steel wheels for those of you that are concerned about weights and things like that. I, it is my personal opinion, and it's the reason that we build them and designed them and build them and sell them, and the reason that we have, the reason that they're patent pending, we spent the money to do that, is because on this bike, the one thing that makes a bigger difference than, in my opinion, anything else you can do at all, even motor swaps, is the rear tire conversion. It just transfers the bike into something totally different. Uh, in my opinion, it's the biggest change you can make. Do you need a 26? No, you don't need a 26. But again, it's kind of like the fork extensions. If you want the bike to be taller, use a taller tire. If you don't need the bike to be taller, use the shorter tire. Sprockets, while we're back here. What sprocket do you need? That's a, that's a question that we get all the time. What sprocket do I need? How do you use the bike? If you still ride it on the highway, I personally wouldn't go to a bigger sprocket in the back. For those of you that spend 99% of your time off the road like I do, then yes, you will love a bigger sprocket and the bigger you go, the more you'll love it, in my opinion. I don't ride, I don't really like anything less than a 60 in the back. I like the 60s and the 70s because they make the bike just unstoppable off-road. They, it makes the bike a whole lot more torquey, puts a lot more power to the ground because I don't ride on the road. So again, the question is how do you use the bike? Onward to ergonomics. Everyone seems to, it seems like the first thing they do is change bars and put on bar risers. I agree the stock bars are thin, metal, cruddy, you know, go to a good handlebar, yes. But when you go to the bar risers, all you're doing is opening up the rider envelope. And the rider envelope is this triangle between the top of the seat, the foot peg, and the handlebar. If you're a bigger rider, then you need to, and you will feel the need to want to open that envelope. And so going to an aftermarket seat that feels taller and cushier, putting on bar risers. We have the new lowered one inch down and one inch back foot peg mounts, which really opens up the rider envelope and gives you more room between the shifter and the brake pedal for a bigger foot, bigger peg. And if you're a rider that stands up a lot, you're probably a more aggressive rider. If you stand up in the woods and move the bike around a lot, the lower foot pegs make a world of difference because you're opening up that envelope and it gives you more leverage on the bike to be able to flick it around. Before we go to the other side, lighting. I get a lot of discussion about lighting. I personally have not... I have tried the other aftermarket headlights. Anything's an improvement over stock, but we do it a lot of night riding this time of year because it's hot here in Arkansas and so if you ride at night it's cool and it's nice. I don't think that you can beat having two eight inch light bars and that's why we run those. Maybe you don't like the looks of it whatever they put out a lot of light. I generally wire them together where they're always both on and it puts out a lot of light. The other aftermarket headlights don't put out as much light but they keep the bike looking more factory. I get it. Oil coolers, I get a lot of people say, oh, you don't need an oil cooler. You may not for the way you ride the bike. Again, if you're an aggressive rider, you're really hard on the bike, you're just because of the way you use it, you're really hard on the oil, really hard on the bike, then you will extend your oil life and in turn, maybe engine components with an oil cooler.
Does everybody need one? No, because they don't ride hard enough. They're not breaking down the oil quick enough. All those things. The disc brake conversion, same thing. How hard do you ride the bike? How do you use the bike? If you use it on the street or at higher speeds, I think you will really appreciate the disc brake conversion a whole lot more than somebody that just puts around. If you just put around, use it on the farm, drive it to the deer stand, whatever you do with it, the disc brake conversion is not gonna do you much good. But if you're more aggressive on the bike, ride it faster, at highway speeds, things like that, will you appreciate the rear brake disc conversion? Yes, in my opinion, you will. Is this a certified forestry approved quiet core? No, it's not. It's not. It is, uh, is it the same? Yes. Is it quiet enough that the forest ranger is not going to say anything? He's probably not going to. However, does it have the forestry proof stamp on it? No, it doesn't. So much of this is rider preference. It is all rider preference. Whatever you like is what you need to use. Try it. You got to spend your money somewhere, right? Uh, a lot of these things are just toys for us. You're going to spend your money on something, right? And so some of you guys drive Priuses and some of you drive Corvettes, and that's going to reflect how you spend your money on your bike. If there's any other questions that you have, shoot them in the comments down below. I really appreciate you guys listening that have listened this long, and I really talk, enjoy talking to you on the phone, and I really appreciate your business. I hope that you understood uh, the answers to the questions and feel free to agree or disagree they're all just our opinion and opinions are like belly buttons everybody's got them so like and subscribe and uh thanks again for watching